In this video, I'm going to show you how to design this glowing border effect inside of Figma. So bear with me until the end of this video. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video and share your thoughts and opinion with me in the comment section. My name is Kian. Here is the chemo. Welcome to my channel. Let's design our button. I'm going to pick up the text tool and add a text layer into my canvas. This is basically a placeholder text for the button and CTA that we would like to design. Here, of course, we can play around with the text styling, but for me, this default setting is working very well, so I'm not going to change anything. Now, I would like to have this possibility to define the background color of my button, and of course, the top and left and bottom and right margin uh, between the uh, kind of the frame of the button and the text. And in the other hand, I would like to also have the possibility to design this button in a responsive way. All the things that I mentioned right now means that we need to use the frame and auto layout feature in the Figma. The thing that I need to do is to just make a new frame and apply auto layout on it and add this placeholder text as a child layer to that frame. We have a combination key for this actions. You can use the shift a combination key to create a new frame and apply auto layout on it and add the layer that you have been selected as a child layer to that frame. Here in the auto layout section, we can divide the padding, top and bottom, and of course, left and right. The most important thing is that here in the sizing panel or the sizing section, we need to get sure that we set the horizontal resizing behavior and hug the contents. In this way, if we start to kind of change the length of the text within the CTA, we can see the parent frame is going to follow the resizing behavior of the text within it. So in this step, I'm going to select the frame number one one more time and go to the fill section in my design panel. I'm going to click on this plus button to add a background color to the frame that we selected. I'm going to select a bluish dark color as a background and then increase the border radius in order to have completely round corners. I will use border in order to kind of design and create our glowing effect around my button. So I'm going to select the frame number one and here in the stroke section, I'm going to click on this plus button. Here we added basically a simple border to our frame. I'm going to set the size of the border to two pixel, and then I'm going to select a bright blue as a border color. Now I'm going to switch to the gradient styling uh, for the border color that we have. The gradient type can be on the linear. There is important point here. I'm going to use basically uh, this gradient color effect that we have for the border to design the macro animation that we really have in our button. In order to make my job easier for the later, I would uh, grab this anchor point which has 100% transparency, basically no color, uh, and position it in the center of my button and frame. The other one can stay uh, somewhere around the button in the corner or in one of the borders. And there is one more step to finish my design. In order to make the uh, kind of glowing effect a little bit more realistic, I would like to have uh, a glowing, blurry shadow around my button. So I'm going to select the frame number one one more time. And here in the effects section in the design panel, I'm going to click on this plus button and add one effect. I would like to have a drop shadow type for my effect. And then I will open the more setting or advanced setting here. And then I'm going to select a bright bluish color for my shadow. I'm going to get sure that we do not have any offset for this shadow. So it's going to stand behind my button. And then I'm going to increase the blurness of the shadow, which will kind of make it smoother. And then increase the, reduce the transparency uh, to have more shadow around my button. This is basically a design that I would like to have for my button in this step. And now it's time to work on our prototype. Animations are working like this in the Figma that we would design and prepare the keyframes of our animation and then connect these keyframes to each other using the prototyping panel and set up some setting for them in order to kind of design our smooth animation. Here, for example, in our case, we would like to kind of animate this a glowing part of the border and turn this around the button. So first of all, I'm going to rename this 
frame to button slash one, which is going to indicate the frame that we have. Just the key frame number one. Then I'm going to make a copy of this one. And then I would like to kind of change the position of this glowing uh, part of the border to right side, which is the keyframe number two. So I'm going to come to a stroke setting one more time and grab this anchor point and position it in the right side. As you might expect that I'm going to do this one more time for keyframe number three. And this time I'm going to grab this anchor point and position it in the bottom border. And for the last time and keyframe number four, I'm going to do the same thing and position this keyframe here. Now it's time to use the prototype panel and connect these things to each other and design our smooth animation. Our goal is to have a button component that we can use it many times in our design file with this effect. So this means that we need to convert all the things that we have to a component. And in that way also we can manage the animation and the prototyping setting easier. So I'm going to say all these layers and convert them to a component set or create a component set out of all these elements. Okay, now you can see that we have a button component uh, with the different variants. So the variant number one, variant number two, and three. We can select the button component here and change the properties that we already added as a variant uh, to maybe keyframes or frames. This will help us later on to have a better understanding of this property. So let's start to connect our keyframes to each other. I'm going to select the first keyframe and switch to the prototype panel and then select this one to the second keyframe and set the tra transition time or interaction type on after delay. I won't have any delay so I'm going to set it on one millisecond and I'm going to set the uh, kind of duration of this animation to 100 millisecond or one second. And don't forget to set the animation type on this smart animation. And this is also important. I'm going to set the animation type on the linear because I would like to have a consistent uh, speed for this kind of animation. I don't want to have ease in or ease out, which might make the animation look a little bit weird. I'm going to select the keyframe number two and do the same thing for it. So I'm going to set the transition type on after delay. No delay is needed. And the rest of the setting is already there. And now it's time for the next one. So after delay, no delay is needed. And we are fine here as well. And in order to make this animation loop, I can select the last keyframe that we have and connect it to the first keyframe. And then of course the interaction type is going to be after delay and no delay is needed here as well. So in this way we basically made a full loop of this animation. Our bottom is basically ready. Uh, I can add a new frame here. I'm going to set a little bit darker background color for this one as well. And then I'm going to switch the asset panel and drag and drop one instance of this component that we made already. To see if the button is working, I'm going to select the frame number one and here I'm going to click on the preview. Let's make the preview a little bit bigger. And as you can see, the animation is working pretty well. And as I said before, we designed this button in a responsive way. This means if we change the placeholder text in anything that we would like to have, uh, the animation is going to work well. So for example, here I'm going to make one copy from this instance and make a new instance and change the placeholder text to maybe hello and maybe another one to welcome home. Now I'm going to run the prototype again and you can see that we have the animation pretty well in all the versions. The process that we went through in order to design this glowing effect inside of Figma is fairly similar in the other design tools such as Adobe XD and Framer. So you can basically do the same things there as well. I hope you learned something new in this video and if it was so, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel right now, like this video 
and share this video with the people that are interested in the design. And at the end, I would like to ask you to share your thoughts and opinion and feedback related to this video and the other videos of my channel in the comment section with me. Also, you can share your problems in the design process that you are facing right now at the moment with me in the comment section, or you can follow me on Instagram and send me a DM there. I will try to get back to you as soon as possible and we can have a discussion about your problem. So let's run together and see you in the next video. Bye.